Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and good morning uh, to everyone watching this uh, video cast. Uh, basically, today uh, we have uh, uh, a good topic to discuss and we'll invite uh, the very experienced panel uh, with us uh, that we want to uh, giving uh, some good of discussion to the people out there, especially who are involved in uh, football, focusing to the high performance sport. Topic for today is uh, new norms of training for Malaysian professional footballer during pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, this video program is actually organized by Malaysian Exercise and Sport Science Association. This video is a series of discussion between all experts in Malaysian football, including head coach, fitness coach, uh, physiologists, and sports scientists. Uh, since the COVID-19 uh, is spreading and has been affected human around the world. So new norm have emerged uh, athlete in particular footballer, no more team training, no more fitness match. Uh, so this has really opened a new perspective for coaches, players and sports scientists about what is the best training approach uh, that suited for them during this period. Uh, so my name is Ahmad Fikri Mohd Qasim, so I am the moderator for today's session. Uh, please allow me to uh, introduce all the panel. Uh, for today's session. So the first panel today is uh, Mohamed Durakovic, uh, the most uh, decorated person, not only as player, also successful as a coach. Uh, we all known him in late 90s. Uh, he won many trophies uh, with Selangor FC as professional footballer. After retirement, he involved in coaching team and uh, managed and coached Selangor team and won Malaysia Cup. Uh, he then moved to Perak FC as a head coach also and again won a Malaysia Cup with Perak. For the second panel uh, today's session is Dr. Ahmad Naim. Uh, we know that uh, he is one of the prominent person in the field of sports science in Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Naim current working as a senior lecturer in UPM after retired from Faculty of Sports Science UITM. Uh, Dr. Naim had well versed experience not only as exercise physiologist, he also involved in establishing sport uh, science for student at in the Ministry of Higher Education. Uh, he's appointed as technical director for Malaysia Rugby Union as well as the team manager uh, for Malaysia Rugby team that won first gold medal in SEA Games KL. Third panel today is the Cairo Anwar, a graduated degree in sports science UITM, uh, one of the alumni of UITM sports science, eh? has vast experience in strength and conditioning coach, started strength and conditioning specialist with ISN in 2007 to 2010, before he moved to Yangon FC from 2010 uh, to 2014 as a sport and conditioning coach. Then year after, he returned to Malaysia as sport and conditioning coach for Harimau Muda uh, C under 19 in 2015. And he returned back to Yangon FC for another season until today. He's still working with Yangon FC as club manager. And number four, uh, our fourth panel is uh, Mr. Nora Sudin Sulaiman currently working as a senior lecturer in faculty sports science and recreation uh, uitm so very well known expert in performance analysis uh, he had vast experience in malaysian football uh, currently working as a performance analyst for Selangor fa for many seasons he, uh, he also appointed as pa uh, for malaysian rugby team uh, so i think uh, throughout the uh, brief introduction uh, all the panel here uh, we can get uh, we can have a good session discuss on the topic given. Okay, um, so our discussion today will cover uh, three parts. Uh, the first part we will discuss about the effect of COVID nineteen on training as professional football uh, footballer in perspective of coach, trainer, and scientist. So therefore, uh, for the first question, uh, shall we start, everyone? <laughs> Shall yep. we start? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. uh, all right. Okay. I will start with uh, Coach Mehmet Durukavik. Uh, so. Uh, my question, uh, so my question to Mehmet uh, is, uh, as a coach, uh, what do you think the 
<coughs> about the effect on the training for your team when this COVID-19 happened. So maybe you can share with us uh, uh, what you, what's your plan. I give the mic to you. Yes, first of all, assalamu alaikum and good morning, everybody. Nice yeah, to meet you. Salam. It's, uh, it's very, very unusual times uh, for us, uh, you know, uh, this COVID-19. Uh, uh, nobody expected it to be as long and as dangerous as it is. So, uh, you know, uh, we have to keep safe. We have to keep staying at home and uh, try to do the best that we can. Uh, from the football point of view, we, we get together uh, very often uh, on the phone and on video conference with my strength and conditioning coach. And we, we come up with uh, programs and training sessions so we can give to all the players uh, that can do individually at home because we are locked down, locked in, and uh, we cannot go outside only maybe to the front yard. Um, so it's very unusual times for us. So. We try to give them uh, a, a program that uh, individually suits uh, most of the players because uh, we know the players very well. The strength and conditioning coach, my, my strength and conditioning coach, Sam, knows them also very well. So uh, he knows and I need know what uh, the players really need. Uh, we try to give them not uh, a very intensive program, but a program that uh, basically gradually they can keep their fitness up as much as they can. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy when you're not training with a ball and you're not in the park and or you're not on the on on the football pitch. But uh, yeah, individual programs as much as we can, so uh, they can keep the cardio going and uh, keep the fitness up basically. Because it's it's all new to us. Uh, we don't know when we are coming back, um, so we don't know really how fit the players are at the moment. All we can uh, judge is by seeing them on video conference. We have that once a week with all the players, see how everybody is. And my strength and conditioning coach uh, gets all the videos from all the players, see what they're doing every day. So, uh, um, so far, what the players are doing, I'm very happy. Okay, thank you, coach. Yes, it's an uh, uh, unusual situation. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you and your team doing uh, doing a good, uh, a good uh, training program. Okay. Now I move to Mr. Cairo uh, before maybe we can go for uh, another round with Coach Mehmet. Uh, but if you have any uh, uh, point of view during the session, you may you 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 may you may uh, you may interrupt. And I think that uh, this is situation is like a discussion. Okay, uh, Mr. Cairo, uh, how are you, Mr. Cairo? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay, as a strength conditioning coach, we know that you have to make sure that your your athletes, your players in uh, in, in a good condition, okay. But now yes, the, yes, sure. that, that there's no gym session, there's no uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, small sided game to inf uh, in, in involve them together with uh, fitness things. Uh, so how do you take this uh, situation and what you did with your players? So. So, so what's your question, comment? Yep. Okay, so the question about regarding effect on the SNC. Yep. Um, due to the COVID nineteen, I I'll, I'll list down about three uh, effects that my point of view, for my point of view. Um, so the first one, because uh, football is a team sport. Okay, so when we have this COVID nineteen, so it indirectly it will be isolated to from the sport to individual. So. Same goes to the training. So instead of we do um, uh, a group exercise together, so now we need to do isolated training by individual. And then uh, indirectly also, from the exercise, normally we, um, most of the exercise, we involve with the football action, right? But during this COVID-19, so the most of the exercise will be isolated. So we just training on, for example, strength training at home, uh, do some maintenance program, that's all. Okay, and then the second one, uh, from the SNC point of view, is, is very hard for us. It's very challenging uh, to monitor the training load for uh, during this COVID-19. And then the last one would be the execute, how we, uh, the player execute the training. So um, it's very difficult to monitor how the 
okay, execute in the monitor, for example. So there is no indication. Okay, um, is it player? Maybe player will feel like it's it's not challenging. So um, what we can get from the session is only maintenance. Okay, okay, Mr. Okay, Mr. Uh, 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 I can see that you have already uh, mentioned about uh, the, the the scenario and then. Uh, together with how to monitor uh, the the players itself. Before we go for the another uh, for another panel, so I just want to follow by your comment just now uh, about uh, uh, about load about uh, the, the the training program that you advise to your players. Okay, uh, normally you, we are doing with ball, and then uh, of course yes, we have the gym session. So. Uh, uh, how do you cope with the uh, players' uh, discipline? So, uh, do you have any problem or issues with their, their 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 commitment to to the process of training? Can you comment about that? I reckon it's a bit challenging um, uh, to monitor most of the players because maybe uh, like I'm I'm talking about scenario here in Myanmar. Not all players is very uh, into IT, okay. so uh, so it's very challenging for me in, of monitoring and then planning and implement the training pro program. So, um, but for the foreigner player, should be no problem at all. Only for the local player, which is uh, the quality of the video, um, the internet connection, is is completely not in the training. Uh, how we the challenge is not for the training, but it's only on the technical part. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, one of the challenge I face um, in here. But I don't think we're gonna have a problem in Malaysia. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Maybe we can ask uh, Coach Mehmet. So do you, do, uh, do you have any problem with the, the this scenario uh, about the discipline? We know that uh, Coach athlete relationship is very. Uh, very important uh, in in, fo in team in team sport. Uh, so uh, the the athletes, uh, so sorry, the players needs coach to to giving uh, feedback and then to uh, maybe refine skill and etc. So because we we can't do this uh, in the uh, aspect of technical and uh, and skill, but we just want to look at their. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure that there there's the they must have certain players their needs uh, uh, voice uh, uh, or we can call it a communication from coach so how, how do you yeah. this situation yeah. yes it's uh, like i said it's very difficult times at the moment uh, you know we've been in lockdown nearly two and a half months and uh, for players to be locked down two and a half months is, is not easy you know we are used to group training we are used to training with the ball and all of a sudden it's taken away uh, you have to stay inside some players live in apartments they cannot go outside so you have to train indoors so you have to have a specific training for most of the players uh and like i said that's been done by sam my strength and conditioning coach but to be quite honest it's very very hard to get them motivated after so many months uh, you know but you, you keep on trying you keep on doing a lot of different things you keep on doing some funny things so everybody can joke and smile and laugh because uh these times uh, being locked in uh, is, is very difficult for everybody. Um, so it's not easy. It's not easy to get them motivated and, and keep going. But they are, they are professionals. We are professionals. And this is our job. And our job is to keep these players as fit as, as we can uh, and uh, physically switched on. It, it's, it's not easy. Um, a lot of players are married with them. Yeah. Everybody is staying at home, and, and, and like I said, it's not easy. But we try to do everything possible as much uh, as we can to keep them uh, mentally and, and physically in top tip shapes by giving them a, a lot of different exercises and uh, try to keep their their cardio going as as much as we we can possibly. But uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's not easy at the moment. But uh, we try to do our best. All right. Okay, thank you, Coach Mehmet, and also Mr. Cairo. Uh, uh, I want to move to uh, panel number three uh, to Dr. Naim. Uh, uh, Dr. Naim, uh, how are you, Dr. Naim? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, uh, Dr. Naim, I want to ask you a question in terms of uh, uh, 
uh, physiology. So how this situation may decrease the performance of the players. Uh, so based on uh, Coach Mehmet just now and also Mr. Cairo uh, talking about uh, monitoring and also strength conditioning uh, uh, activities. So can you uh, more uh, explain in terms of physiology? All right. Basically, yeah, thank you, Dr. Ahmad Fikri. Yeah, it's good to know that as professional football players, everybody is doing something, doing some activities. Although it's quite difficult, it's uncharted territories. I mean, it's the first time for everybody in the world. So, uh, uh, what I can say is that, uh, like Mohamed said, I do agree with him. They need to change the mindset. They need to be mentally strong. They need to be ready. They need to be motivated. They need to know the situation at hand. So what we need to do for the players, I mean, beside the physiology, is to educate them, the situation. Huh? They must be very healthy. They must, they must have good nutrition, staying in good living conditions, and good quality of sleep. Yeah, Those, those basic things that they can do easily. Yeah, so I mean, they could invest in some of the cardio equipment like a treadmill, a uh, uh, stationary bike, or a rowing ergometer. I mean, those those are, are very uh, simple things that they can can invest in, and some dumbbells or uh, elastic bands or fitness bands. Yeah, because because if we stop doing or reduce any activity during this MCO, this movement control order. order the, the, the principle of reversibility creeps in where whatever previous adaptation that we do during training before MCO uh, we will reduce or reverse so if you look at studies it shows that I mean if we don't do anything uh, more than two uh, two weeks more than two weeks we are looking at uh, a reduce a significant loss of performance in my both for performance aerobic performance aerobic capacity and then also uh in terms of muscular capacity in terms of uh, neuromuscular performance so it, it's quite vital for them not to do anything they must do something but uh, like uh, uh master Cairo said that it's quite it's quite very difficult to plan something but whatever it is it's the first time there's no right or wrong thing where we need to be innovative about it and studies have shown that uh, uh, for cut for cardiovascular uh adaptations so if we don't do if we don't do any activity what will be that there will be a significant loss uh reduction in vo2 max because of uh, a reduction in the cardiac hypertrophy of the, of the heart so because of that and we will be, we will be looking into uh, the decrease in blood volume the decrease in skeletal muscle vascularization capillarization so because of that that's why we cannot stop doing activities. So uh, for the coaches and I think the SNC, uh, uh, if we stop doing around two weeks, then they will, they will start to, to decrease. And for uh, the muscular system, I mean, if it's more than four weeks, we are looking into muscle atrophy, where uh, we are looking at the transition of the fast twitch to the slow twitch muscle. So keep on doing the, the uh, activities. And because of if we stop for eight weeks or two months and we are looking at between 5% to 12% uh, reduction in strength. Okay, uh, th thank you, uh, Dr. Naim, for the first uh, 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 expression on the uh, physiologist part. Okay, so the keywords uh, from the explanation is we cannot stop training. So we can do as much as possible. And then uh, based on the advice that we have from the coaches and the expert, and then for sure that uh, we can sustain and maybe can remain uh, the situation that uh, from uh, before the MCO. Okay, uh, uh, I like to ask uh, another question, uh, but this question is for Mr. Norasudin. Uh, we know that uh, Mr. Norasudin is an expert in performance analysis. Uh, it's not just about uh, looking. I I'm sure that uh, because uh, he has sports science uh, background, it's not just about looking at the uh, tactical, you also look at the uh, physiological and also psychological uh, area. So uh, from the fitness thing to the uh, psychological part, so maybe you, you have any uh, comment on this scenario, so how you look at this situation. So please comment, uh, Mr. Rasuddin. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Fikri, uh, panel for today. Just to add on the information, so I'm in the Mahamad team during the uh, the glorious time lifting uh, Bella yeah. 2015. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, since everybody is actually in the grey area, uh, so don't know what what is the best, uh, what is the secret recipe. Uh, definitely, everybody is uh, want to win the title. But again, uh, if we look into the uh, uh, current trend of statistic this is good statistic uh from uh, because because bundesliga is really uh, really started uh, they already uh, continue the season but yeah. based on the first week uh there is eight injuries in six game it's a huge yeah? it's a uh, it's a huge talking point here so because even even though the professional player uh, they don't uh, go with uh with football right they yeah we know they they doing the exercise uh uh at their uh home their own uh, home house but again uh the situation is not the same like on the field so uh this is the thing that we have to uh discuss more uh because in terms of preparation then i really hope that fam give uh ample time for for team who participate uh uh, in terms of preparation before they continue the the the, the league okay, maybe one 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 month before so the uh, fm already uh, make uh, confirm when we want to start then at least we have a uh, ample time to to uh, prepare the team okay uh, for me as an analyst then in in Selangor, I, i'm really lucky because whatever we ask uh management to buy they they provide they, they, they try to provide us we have uh gps with us so all the player they have their own gps and then uh with the video as well uh with your video analysis uh, as well uh we hope that we can uh measure uh, uh whatever we need to measure uh before we start this uh, we, before we continue the season and i really hope that all the data we I can share with uh, physios. I can share with uh, strength conditioning. So at least at least we 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 able to reduce the damage, inshallah. Okay. So that's what uh, in the point of view of analyst. So that that's what I can provide. I mean the, the data, uh, video, video data, and then the the uh, GPS data. So all the expert in in uh, in um, strength conditioning and in the physio, they they can work on. They can manipulate the data. So at least they can give a good advice to coach who uh, should we put in first, who should, should we should uh, 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 concentrate on more training. Uh, that is actually just just an idea for a start. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> all right, thank you, Mr. Nasruddin. Uh, so I, I know that I, I actually I remember uh, you have mentioned in the previous web, web, webinar uh, in the one of the web, uh, webinar conducted by uh, FSR. Mm -hmm. uh, you you mentioned that about uh, uh, it's not just about monitoring during the session. So as the performance analyst, uh, your role also together with the athletes maybe before out of the field uh, and then remain continue on during the the competition and training because you'll be able to giving some advice to the coach and then coach know what to do to their athletes. But I agree with you, uh, uh, just now you mentioned about um, uh, to give a uh, specific time. Uh, so here, maybe any, any one of you can, can, can answer the question or maybe we, we can start with Coach Mohamed. Uh, in terms of training method, uh, especially do, uh, for uh, technical and technical training. So, uh, during this period, <laughs> I, I, I know that you have it's, mentioned just now uh, it's difficult to do it. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, come in, please. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, it, it's very, very difficult when you, you are not with the players and in a group to do to technical and tactical sessions. Uh, it's basically in, impossible. But uh, I am very lucky. I've got uh, my strength and conditioning coach, Sam, who has got his own gym. He's got a very, very big gym. And most of the players have gone to his gym. Uh, they've taken most of his equipment from his gym into their house. So everybody's got their own uh, gym sessions to do. Uh, treadmills, weights, dumbbells, basically uh, ropes. So 
most of my players have got everything that needs to be basically uh, needed uh, and keep uh, uh, as much as they can uh, keep fit and uh, mentally strong, physically strong to prepare when we get back. Because like Chidin said, we don't know when we're going to get back. It's, it's all up in the air. Um, once this MCO is open, we will know what FAM uh, uh, have got their plans and, uh, you know, their plans are to have pre-season in August and uh, start in September. So uh, that's a very long time for us to stay indoors and uh, basically train on our own. So it's a very, very difficult times for myself as a coach, for my strength and conditioning coach, for my sports scientist. Uh, once we get back to our normal uh, routine. We will know how the players are, and uh, it, it's not going to be easier for the first couple of weeks training because uh, they haven't had the, the chance to kick the ball and in group sessions. So we have to monitor them uh, how they are. And uh, once the league starts, uh, we need to rotate a lot of players, keep them fresh because uh, after 60, 70 minutes, most of the players will be physically and mentally exhausted because they haven't trained and haven't played for a long, long, long time. So. Uh, it's it's unusual to everybody. We're all in the same uh, uh, situation, um, so it's going to be very difficult times. But we will try and do our best. All right. Thank you, Coach. So maybe uh, Coach uh, Mohamed Kairol uh, can add uh, some more else uh, relating towards the comment from Coach Mohamed. So maybe in terms of uh, strength conditioning training. Yes. Uh, just want to add. Yes, Coach. Uh, but. We are fortunate because the FIFA just changed the regulation, so they're not going to allow five players to, to sub in. So maybe that one can reduce uh, the chances of the injury players. So before only three players, so now uh, the coaches have more option to sub five players instead of three. Um, okay, um, my, my point of view regarding the training uh, during this PKP, but... Um, because the deal, uh, the government just changed to PKPB, so it means that um, you can exercise at the park, all right? So it's before you only can allow to exercise at home. So uh, with the, the the changes from the government, it allowed to players to do some um, uh, cardio exercise outside uh, on the field, and then they can do some speed training, speed endurance training. Um, on the pitch itself and then um, of course uh, when we train outside we can include the ball training um, in the SS so we integrate with the ball but mm -hmm. the only problem we're going to face is um, there is no opposition in the training station so maybe you do with the partners passing drill um, dribbling juggling and then maybe some shooting uh, mm -hmm. but the, the only challenge is uh, there is no opposition in your session mm -hmm. so which is this is um is we're not going to get the um what coach want to achieve but at least we have something for the players to maintain their uh, their skills during this uh pandemic uh, time um and then also um for the tnt technical and tactical session uh what we do here is um we do some uh, analyze. Uh, I mean, the previous matches, uh, let's say, and then we're gonna send individually to the players. For example, how they did the, uh, how they did mistake during the corner kick, uh, the free kick, or during the position and transition when they are defending. So we're gonna send it out to the players, and then the players can see what they make a mistake during. And um, during the previous matches, so this is what we can uh, add the value for the TNT, where the head coaches they are, they are cannot be able to to deliver to the players. So we divide on the SNC and then also TNT for the coaches. But this is what we apply here. So, mm -hmm. um, so um, because uh, football is a, is a team sport, is integrate with the ball. So when the SNC, we just do the training session at home. So uh, uh, it's very difficult for the player. There is an, um, no motivation for players to do the training session. So I hope with the PKPB, so players can 
get the opportunity to involve balls in their training, to integrate ball in the trainings. So that is my uh, my opinion. Thank right. you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Carroll. Government is already giving some uh, more uh, advice and how to conduct the, the the activities, advice to them to 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 handle or to to have their training in the park or in the, the spaces that that allow to them to train. Okay, or maybe most of the uh, football uh, club they have a space uh, to giving uh, the all the uh, players come and have their training but still follow the uh, uh, SOP of the government. If you want to uh, enhance or increase uh, the, the performance of the players, it's not just about uh, doing the gym session without ball. So uh, most of the modern football, they are now doing the uh, uh, small side, small, small sided, uh, three versus three, four versus four, six versus three session. So maybe, maybe Coach Mehmet also can answer this question. So, what do you think? Because you, uh, you cannot do this. Okay. How uh, uh, your plan? Uh, and then maybe the time is short. So, do you agree with me that uh, we have to go to the uh, small sided uh, uh, SNT? For, for example. Uh, Small, small, small group session, eh? SNG. Eh? Uh, yeah, uh, I think once the government gives us the go ahead to start training, I think they will say groups. So basically, whether it's going to be groups of five, groups of ten, um, we'll have to basically see how that goes and uh, uh, maybe start on uh, working from uh, the defense and the goalkeepers to the midfielders to the to the strikers. So uh, you know, we, we get the coaches on board. We'll sit down. And we have our technical sessions and technical sessions, and uh, it, it will take a, a bit of time because uh, physically and mentally the players aren't fit enough to do ball work. So it will take maybe a week uh, to ten days to get them going, get those legs going the way you want them to go to kick the ball, to do the training sessions with with the ball, and uh, to get the organisation going. So. Um, Hopefully we can do that in the first uh, week to 10 days and then start uh, doing some uh, game situations, you know, but definitely like uh, the, the strength and conditioning coach said, uh, it's very important that uh, we get together, uh, we see how the players' fitness are and we do some ball work, whether it's in the park, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, two-v-twos, uh, we're allowed to go out now a little bit, so... Uh, we can do some ball sessions, but uh, it's it's very important that, uh, like FIFA also has uh, indicated that we'll have five substitutions, like uh, we did uh, uh, see the last week or so with uh, the Bundesliga starting, um, and a lot of players are going down after 60, 70 minutes because physically and mentally they are not that fit. Uh, because you need to give 100 percent it's a very physical sport um so you got to monitor them and you know this is where the sports science comes in mm -hmm. the strength and conditioning coach comes in and then i come in at the end so uh we sit down we we talk we plan and uh, keep our fingers crossed everything will go accordingly because it's very unusual times for us uh, it's never ever happened uh, this before uh we've never been in this situation before so uh, we need to be careful, we need not to uh, go at full uh, strength uh, and conditioning and uh, intensity because uh, the players will break down after 60-70 minutes. Just add something? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, Dr. Naim. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we can also look at uh, this MCO as an opportunity. As we know, most football players, they have uh, chronic injuries. So it might be this is the time for them, for them to really, really recover from these chronic injuries and so to to go into rehabilitation to make sure that they are ready yes. ready for the competition this is time because during uh before this we don't have, have the time for them to really really recover from these chronic injuries we take this as opportunity for these players these professional players so thank you uh just want to giving some uh situation to mr Noah Sudin. uh mm. uh mr Sudin, i mean when when the football is you know, start so I think there's a lot of things that from your department should do, uh, especially in, in observation of the athletes. Uh, so what's your planning? What's your planning? Or you have any strategies to, uh, to, to handle this scenario? Because uh, of, yeah, for sure, uh, from the Bundesliga start, so I, uh, I know most of you watching uh, 
uh, the uh, uh, Dortmund versus uh, Schalke. Uh, uh, so the game yesterday. Uh, so how how your plan uh, looking at this scenario? Uh, so I uh, so please comment. So, so in terms of monitoring, uh, 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 currently uh, the monitoring is just based on whatever we do, based on video. It's, it's not measurable. Okay. So, uh, like my said uh, just now, so our preseason, our second preseason will start. Uh, we really hope that the, the date is 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 is, is true. So the uh, second preseason is on August, and then we'll. Uh, some or other will start our league on September. Okay, so currently, so uh, there is a, a few discussion on on uh, because we're a bit lucky because we already started the league and then we we already went through uh, four matches. Okay, so yes, a lot of uh, hiccup there uh, here and there. So. Um, it's a time for us to, to recover in terms of tactical or in terms of uh, technical and technical. Uh, the discussion is based on so who is actually able to play with whom. All right. For me, uh, the, uh, I, I just provide the video for for coaching team uh, to discuss. Okay. Then coach will be, uh, highlight what we have to to look into when we. Uh, when when the training is started, okay. Then for me, uh, in terms of training dose and in terms of uh, uh, the movement itself, so I I uh, I plan to focus more on uh, on the scene. I, I mean, in terms of if there are any injuries happen, okay, during the training, okay. So at least I can provide uh, a medical uh, a medical team uh, the footage. Uh, how things happen, but cross finger. We, we really hope that that's not going to happen to our player. But uh, knowing our player, uh, when when come into uh, training by 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 themselves, maybe if like one month uh, should be no problem for them. But now is they had the two and a half month. They they do all the routine. Uh, it's not really motivated to do the same routine over and over again. So. The, the 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 biggest uh, task for uh, performance analyst now is just to capture the movement and then uh, just to provide the data uh, in terms of GPS data to uh, 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 physios and to strength conditioning how to manipulate how to increase the volume day by day okay and we really, that's the best that we can we can offer uh, since since we have the the uh, GPS, so it's something that we can measure, okay. Uh, but again, uh, it's not all about the data. Another thing is about the uh, psychologically uh, psychology of the player itself. So how how they want to push themselves uh, during the second uh, uh, preseason? Uh, again, up to them and up to coach how to motivate them, right? But for, for my department, I try my best to provide the data based on uh, the training, a uh, daily training. And then I really hope that the data can help uh, uh, name uh, department just now, uh, physios and, and strength conditioning to come up with the uh, the loads, right? So maybe the, the, they want to increase the load day by day is based on what we have uh, uh, on, on the uh, day before. Uh, so that's the best that we can offer. Uh, that's my plan now, okay, for, for the time being. But maybe when when we start uh, training, so things change. Uh, maybe things uh, uh, will change, and then we we try to suit uh, whatever uh, data that needed by by coach. Inshallah. Uh, I think okay. this is also the high high time for the players uh, uh, to look into their own game using video clips uh, to improve their to look into what are the positive outcomes also the negative outcomes and also to discuss with the coach uh, the tactical awareness and uh, maybe the performance analyst can discuss with the coach on uh, on uh, to capture certain certain aspect of the tactical play for them to look uh, in, during this uh, uh, MCO so they have more times now. Yeah, yeah. We, we did that uh, on 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 first two two weeks of uh, MCO. 
No. Oh, okay. Now, again, in terms of motivation. Okay, but, but uh, in terms of analysis, we, we already have, uh, uh, we have, uh, we went through four matches. So, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of things to discuss. But again, uh, now we are in the, uh, in, in the stage of start to pairing which player is good when, when play with which player. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have to uh, juggle uh, the play because because some player the playing style is different and then it's not really suit with other player so we must uh, we we must have uh, the solution for that because because everybody is actually professional they have their own playing style but how we want to make them play together and definitely to win to win the match right so uh, we, we already done that uh, in the first uh, two weeks of MCO it's really a current discussion we go we go on uh, with the video and then uh, in fact, uh, I'm sending uh, the, the short video clips to uh, through WhatsApp to the player, and then uh, I, I, I uh, share uh, the full game in the Google Drive. So, but again, uh, it's not easy to educate player, right? It's not easy because because um, for them to to re review their own game, uh, maybe they have the problem with that. They must have like coach to tell them. Uh, uh, what's wrong? What's right? Then uh, to add more, uh, some player they're not really keen to accept their mistake, right? So in 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 in, in uh, <laughs> I mean I mean in the in the in a, a group session. So we might approach them individually, right? Uh, so that's why we just sending them. Uh, we keep sending them the short video clips uh, through through uh, WhatsApp. And then okay. Uh, hey, have a look to the video. Then, if you have something to discuss, then you discuss. Unless coach uh, 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 have a special request uh, regarding a specific player, then we'll do that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, for uh, for the time being, the the you know, uh, we have all the technology, we have all the video. But again, if they are refused to to review, and then they don't know how to review again, back to square one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Interesting, Mr. Rasuddin. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, this is maybe uh, a little bit uh, uh, different from uh, the football situation because uh, my question is to Dr. Naim. Uh, maybe it's similar. Maybe it's different. But I just wanted to know from your point of view, uh, in uh, because you have experience as a technical director for Malaysia rugby team and very experienced in preparing presentation training for the elite athletes. So will you share with us uh, your thought on best training planning program for the football in this period? So maybe uh, upper, uh, maybe Mr. Cairo also can uh, try to look at uh, this uh, advice. So maybe you can share. Yeah, Cairo yeah, is the one doing the periodization. So if you're, if you're talking about periodization, it's just a plan, a guideline. I mean, yeah. plan a guideline to prepare the athlete to achieve a very specific goal, which is to perform. And it's not only uh, for them to be able uh, to increase the work, their work capacity, the plan, the presentation. It's not only to increase the work capacity or the player skill, but also for them to be able to execute the tactical plan. So for this to happen, one of the key, key points in uh, periodization is you must know when the competition is. Yes, I also so agree. The problem now is that <laughs> we don't know where the competition is. So usually we work backwards. When we know the competition is, we work backwards uh, to, yes. uh, to to plan to subdivide it into macro cycle and micro cycle. But if we don't know when the competition is, nobody can do anything. <laughs> so that's the problem yeah, now. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah that's the problem. One hundred percent. Even FAM doesn't have the answer when the competition will start. And yeah. this made the coach a headache. Even the <laughs> SNC cannot plan. Uh, I, I do agree with uh, Carol that what we what we are doing now is just for maintaining, so that they don't drop in their performance. Just to maintain them, to maintain their muscle mass, to maintain their cardiovascular fitness. We don't want them to drop, but we cannot plan anything else if we don't know when the competition is. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mai. <laughs> okay. Uh, one hundred percent correct. <laughs> so same, same. Like if we um, try to look example for the Bundesliga, mm -hmm. so before this, the resume the league, the 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 league committee already announced. I think mm -hmm. almost two months before the the first yeah. match, 
So yeah. they give some uh, some ample time for the the team, for the players, for the coaching staff to plan. So at this moment, we have no idea when. The question is when. So like like as a practitioner, as a strength conditioning, it's very hard to do a maintenance program, mm. like maybe for two and a half months. <laughs> so it's very challenging. <laughs> so player will start to think. Oh, hey, hold on, this is the same exercise like last time. Maybe uh, increase the load, <laughs> increase the, the reps, or increase uh, decrease the resting time. Mm. So sometimes we also having a uh, very challenging, very challenging, challenging. <laughs> no idea at all. So, but working uh, on the positive side, I agree with Dr. Naim. So at this moment, we can have a look. Uh, for example, like uh, for the training, so we can work individually. So, which is when in season, it's very hard because most of the time is given to the coach to prepare the team. So we don't want to overload the training by add up our training from the SNC. So now I can work as an individual. So let's say this player have a problem on the endurance, speed endurance. I can work on the speed endurance. And this player have a problem with the explosive, the takeoff explosive. So I can work on the explosive, how the player can take off better. So this is only the positive side from the SNC, but still, from the integration for the sport is I don't I cannot help anything to the coach because there is no football involved. There is no opposition uh, involved in the training session. So yes, there is a negative and positive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank <coughs> okay. You. Thank you, Mr. Carol, Dr. Naim, uh, and previously from Mr. Rasuddin and also Coach uh, Mehmet. So um, we, yes, we, we agree in this scenario in this situation. It's, not, it's very diffi- it's a difficult time to, uh, to 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 try to innovate training to in two and a half months, and then we don't know where when we we will start the uh, the league when we start to play. So uh, I'm sure that that's very uh, that's the struggle time, uh, the, the difficult time to all the coaches, uh, what they want to advise to the coaches. But I, I'm sure that followed by the. the the, the, the statement followed by the story just now. Uh, Mr. Carroll mentioned that uh, athletes or players keep on asking, uh, do the same thing. Uh, 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 a little bit changes on the uh, uh, intensity or load. Maybe it's now uh, this, uh, the, the good time, uh, or maybe we can uh, uh, spot the situation of the players. Now they have a uh, psychological problem uh, because uh, uh, the, the commitment, the motivation, the eagerness to play football maybe uh, decrease. Maybe uh, all the panel can can answer uh, or can give some recommendation. So, what's your idea to improving the uh, psychological part of the uh, players? Yeah, I, I think it's very important that uh, the, the the players uh, start working basically on the weaknesses uh, i have a very good strength and conditioning coach who monitors all my players and uh, see where they're at especially the players that have been injured this is the time now to recover from their full injuries and they get back basically to their um, normal self so it's very important that uh, physically and mentally the players are motivated uh, they do all different things and uh, start looking at what their weaknesses are. Say if somebody needs to put on some muscles, maybe two or three kilos, they speak to the strength and conditioning coach how to go about this because a a lot of these players, really especially uh, the local players, aren't physically that strong. So if they want to put some muscles on now, which is not a bad time, they can speak to the strength and conditioning coach, they can speak to the physios, they can speak to the sports scientists and uh, get the best uh, knowledge that we have uh, in terms of getting them prepared for the season to come because uh, like FAM basically said we will not maybe start the pre-season in August and start uh, the season in September and still that's a long long time it's three it, it's a long time uh, till we start uh, the season so uh, it's, it's very important that we work on uh, players individual what their needs are, what their gains are, and uh, once we get back, uh, we will start doing uh, our, our ball work, basically, you know. But it's it's a very very long time before we come back to uh, to our preseason. And uh, look, uh, the main thing is uh, we have to listen to the government to see what the SOP says and uh, take it from there because 
it's a time where nobody of us has, has predicted this is going to happen and to be such a long time outside of training and football is not easy so there's going to be some very very difficult times for coaches uh, strength and condition coaches sports scientists physios to uh, really think about uh, what we have to do in in pre-season basically okay coach thank you uh, uh for your uh uh, feedback on the uh, scenario just now in the question okay uh i think we, we go for the last uh last part uh so maybe we want to ask uh anyone uh you you, you can start uh, anyone can start uh, uh to uh to give your opinion on what's your uh suggestion to all the uh performance analyze or to uh also to uh, strength and conditioning coach <coughs> out there uh, so what's your advice to them uh, <clears throat> in this uh, current situation before we know that we can come back to uh, to the uh, field? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Want to start for Mr. Cairo, maybe. Okay. Um, from my, this is my own, my personal opinion. Um, so we know that when the, the government announced when the, the league can start, uh, kick it, uh, resume their, their season. Mm -hmm. So the possibility for the players to get the injury is very high. So what we can focus is we can put element of injury prevention. So which is um, um, we concentrate on eccentric and concentric muscle movement uh, for the players. So the player can tolerate uh, for the any any chances to get injury. And then uh, for for the time being is um, like like I agree with Coach Mehmet. It's very long time. It's uh, if they allow to continue the league in September. So now it's almost uh, June. So we have about three months, three months to go. Yeah. So um, and then uh, we have no idea when the government can allow the team uh, train together with the ball. Uh, non contact sport can be allowed, and then. Um, we need to work something else to uh, imitate the same uh, football action in uh, in our training. So maybe we integrate with some uh, strength conditioning uh, exercise, for example, strength training. So with uh, weights, with the body weights, and then after we integrate with some movement, like for example, dribbling, shooting, and then maybe some passing. Mm -hmm. um, we can put some position, uh, some uh, opponent in our session, but with contact it depends uh, but we need to see the regulation from the government how they can allow and then give room for uh, sport to resume in uh, Malaysia especially mm -hmm. all right thank you okay thank you mr Carroll uh, for the suggestion and your opinion towards the scenario uh, and then we hopefully uh, we can we can we, we can go to the normal uh, situation where football can play. <laughs> in the stadium in the in those venue okay uh maybe uh dr naim or can want to, to add up add sure. on something all right so uh, yeah. yeah i go first at the time eh? yeah. So, yeah. Okay. so um it's, it's it's like fair and square games for everyone because i really start if we're talking about uh, start maybe we start with zero okay uh but for me um we just uh, cruise for this year, Cruz uh, just finished the league. Uh, perhaps we have a better uh, condition uh, next year. Okay. So, but as a, as far as I'm concerned, the the virus is, uh, I think, will live with us for another two years. Okay. So we whether we like it or not, this is a new norm. Okay. So, but again, the problem now is everybody is in the uh, again as i mentioned earlier gray area so we don't know where to go with what to go or what to go with where to go so again fair and square for everyone so but the best the best uh, advice that uh, i can give is um we're talking about uh, football there is no half pace always full pace of, of game so it's, it's high intensity game so uh, with the regulation, uh, regulation by FIFA saying that the sub uh, max to five, I think this is the best time for coach or coaching team to find a secret recipe. How and 
when to sub the player and then uh, maybe uh, for this game uh, this certain player they give a full rest then they go because we have i think uh, we have at least like 30 player so then we have to juggle with maybe with a different player uh, for the different game maybe right uh, so but again this is the the, the new norm we never know whether uh, what we what we do is correct or not but again it's based on experience when we experience that for the next match then maybe we have to change we have to change, keep keep on changing uh, just to achieve our target maybe to win the title right okay i think what we should do during this time is that uh, we need to educate the players the players yeah. should know what the situation are they in now they need to understand how they are going to uh, to adapt to this situation and the coaches and the management should organize, should organize and really uh, give guidance and support to them because nobody knows what what's really happening what to do what to do next okay and the most important thing is that for them to be healthy they need to be healthy they need good food good nutrition not to say that they, they can eat as as much as they can we need to work out with the nutritionist because we don't want them to have more fat we want to have more mass, more muscle mass, which we, we should be working with the nutritionist because, because of the lack of in, activity and the gym training, then uh, it might deteriorate their muscle mass, loss of muscle mass. Mm. So we need to maybe uh, to have some supplement of uh, protein or whatever. So we need to discuss with the nutritionist, not me, I'm not an expert in nutrition. Uh, but uh, I, I can eat a lot also. <laughs> they must be living in good condition. Their place yeah. should be clean. Yeah. Should be the hygiene, very hygienic, should be hygienic. Yeah. And the quality of sleep. We don't want them during this MCO to sleep 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, you sleep during the night and you sleep during the day and you sleep 24 hours. We don't have good You quality. wake up just for Bobo Kaposa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> especially for fasting man <laughs> so we need them to be healthy they must know that they need to be healthy because during this time it's very easy for them to to uh, to lose motivation so thank you very much all right thank you dr naim uh before we go to coach mehmet uh, i think to to to, to finalize their their, apa, uh, their thought uh, or suggestion uh, so i think uh, the, the, the point that we can get from Mr. Cairo, Mr. Rasuddin and Dr. Naim, I don't know whether you agree or not. So now it's the high time, uh, the football club, uh, you may, you, you, you have to find uh, 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 maybe expert uh, uh, or people who are involved in sports science, uh, in psychology, performance analyze, nutritionist, and then um, uh, maybe uh, a sports science, uh, 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 sports science uh, expert together with your team then you have to invest uh, uh, to them because uh, maybe they will give some uh, ideas and solution to the team so absolutely <laughs> yeah absolutely i need all these experts uh, with me to be quite honest uh, we, we've got a very good group uh, i believe in all my coaches um, and the panel today everybody what they've said is is absolutely different class because uh, these experts uh, is is what sort of makes all the the players tick. Uh, it's not just about me. It's all about the the, the group, the, the management, the coaching staff, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and at the end of the day, it's the players what they do on the pitch. Basically, you know, we are all professional. We try to do the best that we can. Uh, mm -hmm. But for the time being, I think now uh, at this uh, moment is to be healthy, uh, to be safe. Uh, mm -hmm. to love uh, one another uh, it's Ramadan we should c celebrate because uh, it's very unusual times for us uh, you know uh, I know my foreigners uh, you know the, the, these fo footballs are all professional the local players they're all professional but at, at the moment uh, you know it's it's very very difficult times for us because we're not used to being in this situation um, so we have to do what is the the, the best what we can do uh, for one another, how to keep fit by giving all these instructions from from myself as a coach, from my strength and conditioning, from my physio, from my sports scientists, to my goalkeeping coach and to my assistant coaches. Uh, we all have uh, our opinions. We all give our opinions to to all our players, and uh, hopefully these guys will do the right thing because 
I, I really want to be honest. It's uh, it's very very unusual times for us, and uh, you know we we need to be healthy and we need to stay home and we need to love uh, one one another and and be with uh, our loved ones because uh, you know God forbid if one of us gets this disease, it's uh, it's it's very very difficult times for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mehmet, and all the panelists. So I think uh, from our discussion, I will I, I like to make some uh, summarize summarize on what we have already discussed and what you have already uh, tell us in this session. Uh, so I, I'm sure that everybody uh, agree that uh, the first thing is to make sure that everybody is healthy. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, looking towards we we don't know what when we can start uh, to, to the venue to play football for the competition. So. Uh, from the panel uh, or expert just now mentioned that uh, what to do now is to remain thing then make sure to, to ensure them a healthy feed and 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 have a, a good time with their family and because of uh, uh, we have uh, reached uh, 24 days for in Ramadan uh, uh, so maybe the slightly uh, changes on the training uh, and of course, advice uh, because of uh, uh, in Malaysia, most of the uh, professional players uh, they are they are they are fasting, and then maybe a little bit changes on the advice to them. So uh, that that's a a, a good thing. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the good side that we can uh, look for. So uh, the advice uh, from the uh, professional coach, uh, the head coach, the strength training uh, coach, performance analyst, and uh nutritionist and etc so uh this is the, the 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 teamwork that we advise to uh team uh to, to to come back in in a good situation in in better situation so because we don't know what is going to happen uh, maybe the mco still continue uh, after 9 of june uh, uh because of uh the the, the uh, i mean the attitude of uh, our uh, our uh, netizen, yeah. uh, so we, we don't want uh, the, the the case of virus COVID nineteen increase. We want uh, flatten the curve, and then yes, we can start, uh, we can look at uh, the government is succeed in, in flattening the, uh, uh, the 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 cases uh, of the COVID nineteen among Malaysians, and hopefully uh, we can succeed to 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 win this war. Uh, so. Uh, 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 last but not least, uh, I would like to thank to all of the panel. Uh, firstly, uh, to Mehmet Durakovic, uh, uh, very interesting uh, discussion and a very good uh, suggestion uh, towards uh, the process just now. And then also Mr. Kairul, uh, this is my first time uh, meet Mr. Kairul. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, but in in <laughs> in, in, in virtual session, uh, yeah. but. Um, uh, and I hope that you, you you still continue what you love to do and success in your uh, task as a manager in Yangon uh, FC. Thank you very much. All right. And then Dr. Naim, even though you are now in a retirement process, but still working uh, as a, a, a invitation uh, yeah, uh, no, lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Dr. Naim, uh, we, 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 we need you uh, in, in this industry uh, because your comments may be valuable to people out there, especially in sports science uh, area. And then, of course, uh, uh, Mrs. Noraz Rudin, uh, yeah. one of the experts, uh, the people that uh, first, uh, uh, the, 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 the first individual uh, that go uh, professionally in performance analysis. Uh, uh, so I think uh, your advice, your uh, your, your work, uh, uh, get the, the get the highlight from the uh, from the uh, team and players, and um, perhaps uh, all the uh, football team in Malaysia they can uh, they can uh, uh, come back uh, uh, better and better, and we we also as uh, uh, fans of football we we can watch football uh as uh, as as previous okay um so i think that's all for uh today's session we uh <laughs> I, I, I really haven't thought about it to be quite honest it's uh it's unusual i'm not used okay. to not being with my family i'm always with my family and uh it's very very difficult uh but uh you know we have to stay safe uh we have to keep the people safe and uh 
please, uh, you know, if, if you're with your family and all that, be happy, be mentally and physically strong because it's very, very challenging times for us, uh, you know. So uh, stay, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, please look after your loved ones. Yep. Thank you, Mehmet. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last but not least. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Love you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we can do this again. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. Inshallah. It's, it's, right. it's nice. It's, it's, it's very, very nice to get some information from uh, all of my friends. All right. Okay. Thank you. okay, last but not least, uh, to all people out there, uh, uh, we've, uh, f from me and also from the uh, panel, uh, uh, panel, Mehmet Durukovic, uh, Mr. Rasruddin, Dr. Ahmad Naim, and also Mr. Kairul, uh, we want to uh, wish to all the frontliners thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, yes, to yes. the people out there, please stay home. Uh, so jangan balik kampung. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you.